The Blast Fall Finals came to a close over the weekend, and even though it was a relatively low-key event, we got a pretty important outcome. There was a ton of spicy moments, the deciding map in the Grand Finals was an absolute heater, and all in all, it was super emotional. But most importantly, a lingering question might have finally been answered. Has Cadian been redeemed? Before we get into it, I wanted to remind you all that we now got merch. Listen, it is only getting colder out there, especially here in Toronto, so there's nothing I would want more than to wrap myself in a nice new warm hoodie. We also got a ton of other great merch that would make perfect gifts during this holiday season. So follow the link in our description box to our store website, and hey, maybe pick up something for me. All right, so even though the Blast Fall Finals wasn't the most hyped up tournament of all time, there was actually a lot riding on some of these games. You see, the majority of this event consisted of teams that didn't perform well or at all in Rio. So this was the chance for a lot of teams and players to redeem themselves. With all that being said, it was hard to believe that this event could end up being one of the most intense and emotional grand finals I've ever seen. I'm very disgusted. <laughs> Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> but how the hell did we get to a crying Cadian being hugged on stage by his mom? And how did Heroic come back from a heartbreaking defeat at the Major and pull it off against FaZe of all teams? Well, for that, we need to go all the way back to the beginning and get some context. Let's start with G2, who were probably the biggest question mark heading into this tournament since they were the ones that didn't make it to the Major. And let's be honest, they weren't doing too well even before that. But coming into Blast, they had plenty of time to rest, reflect, and dye their hair. So fans were hoping that they would see a new G2 and things would finally turn around for them. Unfortunately, that would not be the case. G2 barely made it to the playoffs, and when they did, they were soundly defeated by Heroic, getting sent home early from yet another tournament. To make things worse, even Yakindar commented on how unimpressed he was with the team. How are they going to come into this after so long off? I honestly thought that they had the advantage. They had so much time. Uh, to do something, to prepare new things and to like change this, the gameplay on all the maps. And But what I saw is that they literally played the same, both on Vertigo and Mirage. And uh, I don't know, I think they could have at least changed something. At this point, I don't know what the f the answer is for G2. And I honestly don't think anyone else does either. Less than a year ago, G2 was a team cursed by second place finishes but I'm fairly certain that nowadays they would gladly accept a result like that. Listen, I will always be the first to say that esports should take a page from traditional sports in understanding that results don't come instantly. But it's pretty f***ing bad when other teams start commenting on your lack of success. Hell, I'm not even sure if G2 trust in themselves anymore. After the first map, Maniac uh, mentioned that you had some, some work to do in the map too. Some critique was uh, probably also warranted on top of Mirage. How do you take that? Yeah, Give a f the rest of the playoffs saw some pretty interesting matchups between a bunch of teams that were ready to make statements. And let me just say, statements were definitely made. Starting off, Nip actually beat Na'Vi, which ended up being a giant middle finger to all the people who doubted them after their disappointing 0-3 exit at the Rio Major. And I'm not making assumptions on how I think the team felt. Hampus practically spelled that out for us. Uh, yeah, all the talent saying we should lose. I mean, talent are just people who want to be pro players who couldn't make it, right? So uh, who are they to say anything? Ooh, that was spicy. However, Nip weren't the only ones being vocal. On the other side of things, we saw a pretty massive breakdown from Na'Vi. You see, there has been a lot of talk recently about who is going to be the fifth man on Na'Vi moving forward, since Sum Dai Young's performances are now being called into question. And this made things awkward since we were basically just all watching Sum Dai Young fight for his career. And after seeing Simple tilt round after round, I'm not exactly confident that things are gonna remain the same come next year. But both, both him and Hooks actually so far, this event have looked quite sharp. It was, a, it was a good move right there from Simple. He took a big risk swinging that wide out of pit. Now, with all that spicy shit happening, including NA getting sent home earlier than we'd like once again, the real story came in the grand finals. And I'm not referring to the Lord himself, Nicholas Bentner, playing in an actual CSGO show match on stage. I'm of course talking about Heroic versus FaZe. And let me just say, both teams clearly had something to prove. On one hand, we have Heroic. Was their deep run at the Major just a product of upsets, or could this squad finally prove to everyone that they are in fact top tier? On the other, we have FaZe. Obviously, they were embarrassed at the Rio Major, but even before that, we saw the crown start to slip a little. This was supposed to be their year, so a win here would definitely restore some faith. But once things started, it was clear both teams came to play. After each team won their map picks, they found themselves in an absolute heater on Mirage. Heroic took a convincing 11-4 lead in the first half, but FaZe did 
what they always do best, clawed their way back and forced overtime. Brokey up above him, sees his head and smashes him against the wall. Oh, the tap from Jabby and the answer oh. right back by Brokey. Phase, take, 10. Not one single aggressive move being made. Middle clearly there is that nade is immense. But Twist, taken down, it's gonna give Rain a great chance! Oh! oh! Norwegian annihilation! Inside connector, Heroic have been stopped, shushed! No, not this time! FaZe, keep the game going. And Broki, not yet around that corner, didn't oh see him until... And FaZe into the 1v2. Oh! oh! It has to go to overtime. But for whatever reason, FaZe just couldn't handle the reset in OT. Rogue was doing everything right, and it led to them winning the tournament in front of their home crowd. And let me just say, you could immediately see how much this win meant to them, especially Kadian. Down in with the up, and now Robs is dead. They've done it! They've done it! They made their dreams come true. Strike. The emotional man of Cadian, somebody who has hit rock bottom unlike so many others. He's gone through it all. Cadian was practically in tears from the moment they won the match, and to add to all the emotions, this happened. Because the set kind of executes, you know what to do from A to, to C. <laughs> 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 Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Jesse? Now, if you're new to CS, you might be wondering why the hell is this guy crying so much and why did his mom come on stage to hug him mid-broadcast? And that's fair because this does not make sense if you're lacking some much needed context. So Kadian is a guy who has been through a lot as a player and most people won't dispute that. But in recent years, Kadian and to an extent Heroic have become quite polarizing in the community. But why? Well, a lot of this stems back to the infamous coaching bug. Heroic's former coach Hunden was notoriously banned for exploiting the bug back in 2020 to help his team win tournaments. But in August of 2021, he claimed that the players knew and even helped him. After those accusations, the players involved released an emotional video explaining their side of the story, and Isak found them not responsible since they were being manipulated by Hunden. Despite all that, there's many people people who still dislike Kadian and think that he's a cheater. On top of that, there's others who think that his nice guy attitude is all an act to get people on his side. But at this tournament, things finally looked a little different. If you've been paying attention to CS over the last year, you may have noticed something with the crowd. They were actually cheering for Heroic. This is notable because just last year, they were getting booed at the same tournament by the same fans. Now, Danish fans are notorious homers, so maybe they were just cheering for them because they finally admitted to themselves that Astralis is cooked. But nonetheless, I couldn't help but notice it. Regardless, ever since the cheating bug incident, and to an extent even before that, Kadian has been fighting to get a big win on land to prove that he's not an onliner and not a cheater. And at the Blastfall finals, he finally did it. Kadian and Heroic defeated one of the greatest teams in the world, and no one can take that away from him. Listen, you don't have to like the guy, but at this point, I think you have to respect his determination. I want to see a poll in the comments. How we feeling about Kadian? Do he got that dog in him? Oh my god. <coughs> Excuse me. Why does Kerrigan look exactly the same every time he loses the tournament? He's like always just like has the same blank expression and he's just like staring. It's the same expression I noticed at every tournament. 